So short clips on iOS 17. There's so much to cover this time around because this is probably one of the biggest updates as far as automations is concerned. Since I was 13, I believe, I say that because for the first time we can run automations fully automatically without user confirmation. But before we delve into major automation changes, let's take a closer look at the UI updates on this application. There is an interesting twist here that you might not have noticed right away. When you open the shortcuts app this time around, under all shortcuts, you cannot see all your shortcuts anymore. Each of the folder entries only show the first four shortcuts in that folder. You can expand to enter the folder and access all the shortcuts in a folder. It's probably the dumbest iOS design decision I've seen in a very long time because frankly, I don't think that's what I call all shortcuts. But the app shortcuts, they still reside at the very bottom of this list. But here's where things can get a little bit inconsistent. Maybe there's an update that is required for the older applications to adopt the new UI of app shortcuts. But it doesn't matter how they look because you can long tap on any of the app shortcuts to access a menu. This menu allows you to use the app shortcut as an action in a new shortcut. And guess what? You can search for these app shortcuts as actions and add them to your existing shortcuts. I apologize for being so confusing because everything is called shortcuts and everything is called pro in the Apple lineup. But yeah, shortcuts, app shortcuts, shortcut actions. We're gonna be dealing with a lot of those this time around. Moving over to the automations page, there is a significant change to the UI. You no longer start with a blank slate with every automation. Instead, you can select one of your existing shortcuts to run when the automation triggers. But for now, let's talk about the gallery page. Honestly, almost nothing has changed here. I'm not sure if any shortcuts have been added or if anything else has been updated in the last few years. There is an extra large widget that is available for your iPads. There is a new small widget that can run two different shortcuts instead of just the single shortcut small widget. We also got an interactive widget for the lock screen. Now let's talk about the most significant change to iOS automation in the history of iOS automation in general. You can now create an automation that runs when you connect to a specific Wi-Fi without needing any input from the user. The best part is that we're not talking about Wi-Fi and Bluetooth are the only ones gaining the ability to run automations. It's the fact that all except one trigger have the ability to run automations automatically. And yes, that includes the brand new triggers that were introduced this year. Oh yeah, I never told you about the new automation triggers. Let's get into that. Let's first talk about the transaction trigger. It's actually really cool. It triggers when you use your iPhone or an iPad to make payments on the internet or via the NFC tag. When creating a new automation, you can filter based on cards or even by the category of purchase, or you can even filter out any specific vendors. Plus the transaction details are passed as variables to the automation. But you know what this means, right? I hope your gears are turning the same way my gears were turning when I heard about this automation, because now you can automate your expense tracking. The only question that remains in my mind is, what application should I use to capture this data? I haven't selected one yet, but if you have any suggestions, please let me know. I'm, I'm really looking forward to something like that. We have another trigger for detecting if an external display is connected for the iPads. This, I believe you can use if you connect your iPad to an external display for work, you can start a focus mode or run another automation to optimize your workflow. And finally, there's a trigger to detect if stage manager gets enabled or disabled. Now, this one might not be the most exciting one because not all iPad users even have access to Stage Manager, but for those who do, it's not great, but it's a decent addition if you can find a use for it in your workflow. Now, finally, let's talk about what you guys are really, really here for. What are the new actions that we got in iOS 17? We have a bunch of new clock actions this year. You can now edit your sleep alarm, but you still cannot edit other alarms. On the toggle alarm actions, instead of showing you the label, the action shows the time of alarm. You can now tap on the name to show the updated time and if the alarm is enabled or disabled. Other than that, you have dedicated stopwatch actions and a bunch of timer actions. Jumping from one set of niche actions to another, you finally have an action to open a certain collection in the Photos app. What is a collection, to be honest with you? I don't think I know that. Let me let me find out. Collections, iOS photos. Photos collections are designed to present multiple images in a well-organized stack, making it very convenient for you to view cluster of images. So collections are automatic albums, 
question mark. Anyways, enough about photos, let's talk about the application that takes these photos. Since the app shortcuts are also available as actions now, the camera app gets actions to open the camera to a specific preset. I wish there was a way to automatically capture or start recording as soon as you open the preset, but that's not possible just yet, so hopefully next year we'll have that functionality. Then for the calendar app, you can create a new calendar directly from Shortcuts on your iCloud account. You also have two new actions for the Freeform app. You can now create a brand new board or open an existing board directly in the Freeform app from Shortcuts. You also have an action to end workouts now. With iOS 17, we're getting a lot of cellular data settings pushed into shortcuts. So these actions are kind of revolving around your ability to use your phone as a cellular device. I don't know who are these people that are doing that. But if you are one of those people, we have actions to find a cellular plan, set the default voice or data plan, and you can even reset your cellular statistics this time around. This probably is a great set of actions for anybody who uses two SIM cards on their phone. I barely use the one SIM card that I have on my phone, so these are not all that useful for me. But what I do is tether data from my Apple devices to my non-Apple devices. For those, I have an action to get hotspot password and to set a hotspot password. There are a few more short transactions that couldn't fit in one of the existing categories that we already talked about. So here are a few miscellaneous actions also available on iOS and iPadOS 17. You have an action to enable or disable Stage Manager. This should only be available for iPads that are compatible with Stage Manager. That doesn't mean it's available for a whole lot of iPads to be honest. Then you have a scan document action. This functionality was always there on iPhone, but it is accessible to one single action this time around. To complement the launch of the action button with the iPhone 15 Pro, we have a set silent mode action. The set volume action also has been updated. You can now modify the media and ringtone volume with this action. There's also an action to transcribe audio files into text, but it seems to be only working for short audio files. Although with iOS 17, we got some really exciting features, there is still a whole lot of basic functionality that is missing from short. For instance, wouldn't it be great if we could launch multiple applications all at once with a single shortcut or in Spotlight Search, we could just search for shortcuts in general, instead of searching the entire iPad and the entire web all at once. I wish I could just be like, hey, search for shortcuts. But honestly, these are such small issues because with the automation update that we have received this year, this has to be one of the best updates we have gotten in a very, very long time. And if this video helped you in any way possible, I would love to hear from you. I wanna know how you plan to use these new actions, how you plan to use these new automation triggers, and for watching until the very end so I can identify you for being a supporter of this channel, please leave a fire emoji in the comments.